and welcome to everybody online who's watching. Um, tonight we're going to go through uh, as much as we can through the guidelines and uh, for our new uh, Nova Scotia investment program. There's been some changes to the funding mechanisms that we have uh, from, from pre previous programs. So we're here to go through it and to take questions. Uh, if you're online, you can uh, ask questions via Twitter by uh, mentioning at Music Nova Scotia and or hashtag MNS investment. So we do have, uh, we are monitoring that feed. So we will be able to take questions from people online. So um, first of all, I just want to touch a little bit on, um, well, first of all, I should introduce myself for those of you who don't know me. My name is Scott Long, and I'm the executive director of Music Nova Scotia. And this is Serge Sampson, who's our new program officer, program manager. Hello. So um, lots of new things happening here. Um, the first thing is just sort of a general uh, description of or some insight into uh, the program and uh, why it's been redesigned and uh, what the mandate for the program is for us. And um, one thing you may have noticed in our uh, new guidelines and business policies is that um, we don't use the word funding anymore. We're using the word investment because that's really what it is. And the biggest thing about that sort of change in language um, comes with it sort of a change in mindset around um, how we deliver the program and how applicants use the investment. And, um, you know, it's, it's not so much about need, I don't think. I mean, everybody needs more money and, and you know, to, to do what they're going to do. And not only in, in this business, but in life in general, I think everybody could needs money. But, you know, the key thing around this being an investment is that we want people, we want our applicants to um, think of it in terms of leverage. Um, how can you use this investment from Music Nova Scotia to generate more investment and increase sales, whether it's around live performance or the sale of your recorded um, uh, material? Uh, one of the, the big mandate that we have around the new programs is for um, the development and growth of small music businesses around artists and their intellectual property. So it's really about exploiting intellectual property in a positive way. I mean, that sounds like a, a weird word, exploiting, but... Um, it's a good thing. Yeah, but it we... Means we money. Yeah, so we really want our applicants to, to, to think about this not as funding, but more as investment, and that's, that's important for us. And... Um, so that's where we're going with it. Um, you know, you'll see in the new applications, and we'll get there eventually, you know, in, in the online application form, we ask for uh, potential revenue. You know, we want people to really think about that, you know. If I get investment from Music Nova Scotia, how can I leverage that investment to produce future revenue, whether it's other investment from a, uh, agencies like Factor, or uh, through sales, again, in, in, in your live performance, other investors. Um, that's really key to, to, to how, this, how these new, this new program works. So um, any questions so far around that, around the, the philosophy and the mandate of the new program? Does that make sense? Okay. You won't see the word funding in any of our materials anymore. We took it out. Did a big search and replace yeah. of that word for funding and investment. So it's a bit of a testament to how uh, how great the scene is, is doing in Nova Scotia because we've got a lot of um, you know positive stories and, and positive investment, and that in turn means that there's a greater demand for um, the investment dollars that we have to, to administer on behalf of the province. So um, so it's it's a good thing, but it means that uh, the mindset has to change a little bit around that. Yeah, and you know, a big thing is that we are trying to up our game with our programs mm -hmm. and, and sort of the level um, and who, you know, what's eligible and what isn't um, to be more competitive. Um, it's, you know, it, it's very competitive. 
we need, you know, uh, not to say that we don't get good applications, but we need to continue to strive towards better applications. One of the things that we do want to do with the new investment program is to give maximum uh, investment to better projects. So we don't want to be prorating things just to spread money around. If, if, if $10,000 is the maximum for our marketing stream, then we want to be able to give out the $10,000 to the best projects until our budget is gone, basically. Um, we think it's a bit of a disservice to prorate and spread it across. If the projects are really good, I think they should get the maximum amount of investment um, so that they can be uh, successful projects. So, so the first thing we'll do is we'll just go over our eligible applicants. And uh, just looking at Sean's commands here. It's not working. Zoom to fit. Yeah. yeah. Full screen. Oh, Command L. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's not working. Okay. Well, anyway, you can see that, right? Okay, so one of the big differences now, there's no more emerging. We don't have a, a category of applicants called emerging anymore. Um, so we're, we're uh, re reclassifying emerging artists as developing artists. And again, one of the other things about this program is that we're trying to be more in line with other funding agencies, in particular with Factor. So we, we set up the developing artist program very much, if not exactly like Factors, pretty much. Um, a couple of reasons. We think it's a really well thought out and written uh, stream for investment. And we think that um, by doing so also, uh, we'll have stronger applications from Nova Scotia going to Factor for, for that program. So um, we want, again, it's about leverage. We want you to be able to leverage more. So, you know, if you're, uh, if you, you know, getting used to this program um, with us, and it's very much like factors, then you're gonna be better at applications to factor. And it's gonna improve your chances to leverage our investment. Um, it's not, the, the criteria is not unlike an, an emerging artist though. It's pretty much, um, uh, artists and companies who have not yet really realized any sort of national exposure, um, sales under a thousand units, um, not a huge uh, uh, social uh, media presence just yet, and you probably don't have a team around you like an, a manager, an agent, publicist, uh, a label or licensing or anything like that and uh, not much exposure outside of the province. So I think that's pretty straightforward there on, on what that is. It's pretty much what, what an emerging artist was. Um, we also have a developing company or entrepreneur and um, they, they, you must meet all of these. Um, you need to be a Nova Scotian owned business and um, by Nova Scotian owned, uh, there's a, a couple things around that. In our business policy there is um, uh, which is a fairly uh, significant document with a lot in there. So I don't, we don't really have time to go through all of our business policies tonight, but we really strongly encourage you that you go through them and read them and understand them before you apply. Um, but you must be a Nova Scotia owned business and 51% of your client base must be Nova Scotian. Um, you need to be registered business um, with a CRA business number. So again, we want to see, we want to um, grow uh, more business companies and entrepreneurs. So if you have a small business uh, working in the music sector in this province and you're not registered with joint stocks and don't have a CRA business number, we, we want you to do that. Um, and it's all part of the whole development of your business. You know, to be a proper business, you should have that stuff in place. Um, Non-Nova Scotia developing company entrepreneurs may not be the applicant for a Nova Scotian artist. Um, you must be engaged in the primary activities of artist management, booking agent, licensing sync, a publisher, music producer, promoter, publicity promotions, record label, recording studio, or some combination of, the, of those. Um, there's a couple of new things in there, recording studios, um, promoters, publicity and promotions, or I think we, they were eligible before, but there's a couple of new types of businesses that, we'll, that we will look at for investment as well. Um, 
and you need to demonstrate that you're actually earning some sort of revenues. Um, you're not, even at the developing level, if you, if you never generate it one cent yet, you're not going to be eligible for this program. You need to be able to, to show us that, that you are generating something, you know. Um, there's some kind of revenue coming in. They would have to be Nova the, the clients would have to be meet our definition of Nova Scotia. And is that just a list of, of uh, clients or uh, in terms of revenue? Um, it's not really directed to your revenue per se. It's just your roster. So if you're an agent or um, a manager or you want a record label, you need to be able to prove to us that 51% of your clients are Nova Scotia. Um, we might not necessarily ask. We might already know that, but it may be you, you may be asked to provide that. Okay. Um, so for export ready artists, so the other thing now is that we used to have emerging, export ready, and exporting. Now there's only two classifications. Okay. Um, there's developing artists and there's export ready artists. So to be an export ready artist, you must meet all of these. Uh, you must have a current marketing and business plan. Okay. Um, you have to have one qualifying release within the past two years. And again, the definition of qualifying release is in the business policies. Um, you have to have a minimum of 1,000 lifetime units sold of all releases combined. And for the digital realm, uh, 500 streams for us will equal one unit sold. And we think that that's pretty fair because uh, the industry standard really on a bigger scale, I think it's 1,500 streams that they want to see for one unit. So, but we're only looking for 500 to equal one unit. And then six single downloads will equal, will equal one unit sold. Um, so, and again, we may ask for that proof that you've sold 1,000 copies. So for streams, does that only apply for Spotify and Apple Music and other such things? No. Like SoundCloud, YouTube, yeah, well? yeah, yeah. We're, we're going to be pretty flexible with that. So... Um, you know, we, the, the guidelines and the business policies are a little bit more, they look a little bit more stringent than they used to be. Again, we are trying to up our game, but we still, we want to make sure that we're working with, with our members and our client base to make sure that, you know, um, you're fit and you're in the right category. Um, you need to have upcoming booking or contracts for performances. Um, you need to have a strong professional history with regular touring. Uh, and exposure outside of Atlanta, Canada with, with, with publicity and media. Um, you can have an independent or established team infrastructure. So we, we want to see you have a team around you of some sort. Um, a, a significant online presence, which is, we don't, it's not really defined, but again, it would have to be higher than, you know, it's, we're looking for bigger numbers than uh, a developing artist. There's no set number. It's just something that we'll, we will evaluate. And that's part of your, your, your applicant profile, right? So. Um, that stuff is important in your, to keep your applicant profile up to date. Um, and groups. for groups, you need to have uh, band member agreements. So that's different. Uh, and we put that in there because we think it's important. You want to talk about that a little bit? Well, yeah, it's, uh, you know, band member agreements. That w there are, they're not, you don't see them super, they're not very common, but they're really important. Um, it's important to, especially if you're going to be uh, an organization or, um, you know, an, or, an organization that is looking for funding, it's important to be, um, you know, organized with how you've distributed the ownership of the, of the whatever organization, you know, the, the musical uh, organization that you're, you're doing, uh, whether it's a company or an artist group or whatever. Um, <clears throat> there's lots of times when things can go sideways and, you know, handshake deals are all well and good and, uh, you know, many of us are friends with our bandmates and that type of thing or even our business partners, but it's, we think it's really important for band members to work this stuff out in advance so that uh, everybody's kind of on the level and understands what their roles are, uh, what's expected of them, and how they're going to deal with um, potential liabilities like funding agreements and other uh, things of that nature. Oftentimes there's somebody who's kind of the, the point person and is in charge of all that, that kind of information 
and the other artists don't, the other people in, in the group don't know what's happening necessarily. And we want to make sure that people um, have this for themselves as well as for, it's just a good business practice and it's good, it's good for us in terms of um, understanding that you all understand your liability, so. It's all about developing yourselves more as a business. Um, I thought I heard you use the F word in there. Did I? Yeah. No, I didn't. <laughs> funding, you said funding. Oh, funding. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so your mm -hmm. joint stocks is your registration yeah. so that you're a legal company in the province, but you need to have like a shareholders agreement essentially is, essentially yeah. is what it is. So, you know, how do you distribute revenue? How do you distribute songwriting credits? Uh, you know, um, is every band member a, a business partner? Some bands aren't. Some bands, maybe there's only three people that own the band. And, you know, maybe uh, the bass player or the drummer are, are hired help, you know, so, but we, we want to see that. We want to see a, a band member agreement. Um, and those should be uploaded to your member profiles, okay? <clears throat> Export ready company, okay, we'll try to move faster. We got a lot of ground to cover in two hours tonight. Um, again, 51% client base, same as developing, um, be registered, have a business number. Um, Non-Nova Scotian businesses can be the applicant for a Nova Scotian artist, but again, they, the artist would have to be, um, and th it might not even make sense, but we want it to be open because we're seeing more of our, our artists are working with international um, companies. We have a lot of uh, people that are um, signing with labels in Germany, in the UK, and places in the United States, so we don't want to prohibit any sort of investment around that if the label in, the, in Germany thinks that they want to put an application for a Nova Scotian artist, why not? You know, as long as it's specifically for the Nova Scotian artist, and in our business policies you will see that there is language in there that prevents a label from taking that resource that we invest in and putting it into their general funds and you know, making it recoupable money and things like that. It, does, it has to be very specific to the, to the Nova Scotian artist. So again, we want to show the rest of the world that we are open for business, so we thought that that was important for that. So. Um, we have a, a bunch of categories here of different businesses that you need to meet certain requirements. And um, it's all pretty straightforward. Um, for the labels, or sorry, for the managers, or label, sorry, um, you have to have released one Canadian artist recording within 12 months. And you must demonstrate the capacity to contribute the, the minimum financial investment. So um, we, our funding programs are either 25% investment, 50% investment, or 75% investment, depending on the program. If you're a record company, you need to demonstrate to us that you have the resources to put up the other 50%. And as you'll see when we go through the specific programs, we've done away with a lot of in-kind and, and in-min fees and stuff. So it has to be real money that's going up against it. Uh, publishers, again, um, there's some minimum requirements you have to meet here. Basically, it's about being current and having current clients. That's sort of the, the gist of what these requirements are for. Um, and that, you know, we, we know that you're actually in that business, okay? Uh, same thing with music managers. Um, a manager has to have commercially released album within the last 24 months, at least one. Uh, they have to have a combination of 30 paid engagements on their roster over the last year mm -hmm. between all their clients. Um, so there are some things. So other companies that we haven't really dealt with before. Uh, we have a question from online. It's okay. from Forward Music Group. They're asking, uh, do the export-ready companies need to meet all of the criteria, specifically the 51% uh, Nova Scotia clients for labels and managers? 51%, <laughs> yes. Absolutely that. that yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, for booking agents, licensing sync promoters, publicity promotion producers, and recording studios, it wasn't really, when we thought about this, um, there, it's not, there's not like a real sort of clear set, uh, <coughs> you know, set of criteria where you can determine if these types of companies are export ready. So what we're asking these companies to do is to contact Serge and discuss um, where they are with things in their business. And we can go back and look at certain things. We can look at the clients that they're working with and apply some of the other tests to the clients, things like that, and have a conversation and um, <clears throat> figure out where they fit if they're, if they're export ready or a developing company or not in that, in that realm. And then we also have, uh, besides um, on the artistic side and the, and the company side, we do have uh, a community presenter uh, level of applicant. 
And these are our uh, uh, nonprofit community organizations that present music um, that were formerly under our old Bring It At Home program, which doesn't exist now in our new programs. So um, there is a category of applications for them under our live performance stream. And that's it for eligibility. Is there any questions? There's some from online. Okay. Um, Canadian Embassy asks, uh, does or can MNS provide, Music Nova Scotia provide a template for band member agreements? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so we can. We can yeah. provide that. Yeah. And Forward Music Group had a follow-up, and they were wondering if non-profit music companies are eligible. They are not. And we've got a question from Kristen Cameron from uh, Sonic Entertainment Group. Um, export ready social presence. Can you give us a ballpark figure on the numbers we're looking for? I think we covered that in saying we didn't have a hard. Yeah, we don't have, we're going to have to benchmark that now when we get this going and people are updating their member profiles right now. So again, I can only stress go, make sure your member profiles are updated. They need to be updated a week before the deadline anyway. So you've got some time. But we're going to go back and we're going to look at reassess all the data after this uh, over the next few weeks while people are updating, uh, and we can sort of benchmark. Sort of, we can look at the lowest and look at the highest and find sort of. Um, and, and again, we we want to have some flexibility with that. There's no hard numbers on that yet. But these this this program is young. It's it's in its infancy. We haven't really had a deadline yet. So, um, you know, we want to be able to work with it and see how the data comes in over time, and um, you know depending on what we see and how we analyze the data, uh, we may make thresholds for social media, but we don't have any right now. Any other questions? Um, Alize asks, are you going to set aside bigger artists? I, I'm not really sure what, um, maybe you can retweet us, Alize, and, and uh, define that a bit more. What do you mean by, are we going to set aside bigger artists? Okay. Um, that may actually relate, I think, if I understand that question correctly, um, there is a new Creative Industries Fund uh, that the province is administering directly at the Communities, Culture, and Heritage. And it's our understanding to date, they haven't put out really specific guidelines yet, but it's our understanding that um, large, very large companies and very large artists that we have in the province uh, may be... Um, uh, eligible to apply at that fund for large scale projects that have significant amounts of risk um, that you wouldn't see in, in projects that come through our stream. So um, that's, I, I, maybe, I think that that's maybe what mm -hmm. she means, but there, 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 there's potential opportunity for that at that fund. What was the name of the fund? The Creative Industries Fund. And that's a fund that's open to all <laughs> subsectors of the creative industries. So we're, we're doing away with export ready and exporting, so everyone is now just export ready. Or developing. Yeah. Even if you're exporting. That's right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So how is that going to affect, is, is it just more people applying for less money or? No, there's actually, there's, there's actually more money in our, in our programs all together now. Yeah. Um, it's the same, well no, the budget's, it's, it's the same pot of money that, that, we, that we were receiving annually, but the way we've redistributed it, there's actually a little bit more money. And um, again, it goes back to, um, you know, it's, it might be a little bit tougher for developing artists at first, mm -hmm. but once you get to export ready, I think it's better because you're there and you're, you're able to get um, the max, you're, you're going for the maximum yeah. dollars. Um, so, but yeah, so those of us who are in export ready now, aren't, we don't have to worry about Or do, or we you do. are, yes, yeah. you are competing with exporting right. artists. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything else? I don't think so, not okay. right yet. Let's move it on. All right, so we'll go through artist development stream. Yeah. What department was the new creative industry? Communities, called? culture, and heritage. Mm -hmm. Mickey and uh, I think Mickey's looking after Mickey's looking after the music side of it, but again, it's not just for music. So, and the the, the full details of that program aren't aren't out yet, so um, we can't really speak to it specifically. Um, 
but we do know it's it's for very large projects with with a lot of risk. Um, so, okay, <clears throat> artist development stream. Uh, again, if, are you familiar with the Factor Artist Development Program, the new one that they launched? Yeah. Okay, so this is uh, an annual investment. So be for a year of development, um, it's a four thousand dollar investment for one year. Uh, the eligible expenses are fairly uh, flexible and uh, broad in this program. Um, there are certain um, restrictions on how much you can spend on what, but um, it's, you know, there's a wide range of activity, just like in emerging. Um, although there is one thing, we, you do need to, re to submit a track when you apply, and you need to submit a, a delivery track when you're done. It can be the same track, but uh, but one caveat to that is that it, it can't be the only scope of your project, a recording. And that's one thing that, uh, for us, what we're looking at is that, um, you know, under the old emerging program, we ended up um, investing in a lot of recordings that just, we never really, you know, saw any ROI or, you know, people wouldn't even finish, complete their programs. It would just sort of, you know, be money into, into the, just evaporate it. And uh, so we don't, want to be record, uh, investing in a lot of, uh, in, just, in just records. We're not a record company. Um, we're, we're living in an age right now where there is so much music available and there's no scarcity anywhere. So what we're trying to do is develop um, investment around promoting records that are, you know, that you're bringing to us, you know, that are, are worthy of the investment, that have a good business plan around them. Um, so that's kind of the, the philosophy behind the artist development stream is, is to, um, you know, get, get it. it's not just about, okay, well, we're going to go make a record in my mom's basement and then we never see you again or we never hear the record or, you know, just, you know, so we, we don't want that anymore. Um, so that, that's one of the things about this, this stream. Um, there's all kinds of nuances and details in here. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, so what I'm point five here for sound recording projects must include at least one other uh, eligible activity. So there would have to be a marketing component to it or a touring component to it, uh, that type of thing. You can't just record a record under this program. You can re make a record and we'll, you know, it's an eligible expense, but something else has to go with it. Um, another thing too uh, about this is that um, don't, we will recognize a maximum of $500 in this investment stream for donated services. Um, also, professional songwriters are eligible for this. So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so a professional songwriter would be someone who goes and writes songs for other people. So someone who's purely in the business of writing songs for their intellectual property to be exploited by others. Um, you could be a professional songwriter and still be in a band, but you can't go and write songs under this investment stream and have your band use them in the, in the immediate or near future. It would have to be something that you're marketing or trying to sell to other artists to use, and you'd have to be able to show that in your plan, that that's, that, that, that's what it is. So, um, and export-ready people are not eligible for this, so, but professional songwriters are. Does that make sense? Yes, they can. Yeah, if if they're in the if, if if there's classical composers who are in the business of, of writing material solely for someone else to, uh, you know, license, then by all means. And uh, what about mechanical producers where they're just creating the music for like an artist that's writing to it? Um, uh, that's a good question. You know, uh, and we actually um, have uh, producers that are eligible actually for our business development stream. So that might be more of a fit okay. um, than, than a songwriter. Although, you know, I mean... That, if it was a specific yeah. thing where they were writing, so writing beats or something like that, yeah. um, I think the key, at least, you know, the way that we've... What we're thinking about in terms of um, what we want to encourage is that they should have at least um, some form of ownership of the yeah. intellectual property, yeah. right. right? So selling right. Your, your beats at a flat rate 
and not retaining the copyright. I don't know about that one as yeah, much. Yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, it specifically well, says write songs. Exactly. So, so, so I think I think yeah. if they but if they entered into an agreement with it with an artist, so they wrote the wrote the beats, and then the artist wrote the lyrics over it. Yeah, fifty fifty splits, and they were retaining the copyright of the song. Then I think that would be that would fall into the definition. Yeah. yeah. We're not sure on that. We'll have to yeah, actually right. go back on that one. We'll think about it. Yeah. <laughs> but they're definitely uh, producers, beat makers. Yeah. Yeah. If they're a business, if they have a business number, they're mm -hmm. eligible for business development. Awesome. Yeah. And we'll get to that. Um, one application per deadline. Now, because of the way that the, it took us a while to negotiate and uh, work this out with government partners this year, and you know, we have a late deadline in July, and we can't do a full year of artist development, but we want to get some money out there. Um, there is a deadline in September for artist development this year, and it'll be for a half year of development, so for basically six months, and it's going to but it'll only be a $2,000 investment. And um, you can only hit this program now three times in, in your lifetime, as a, as an, in your artist lifetime. Uh, but we're not going to count the September deadline towards your three. That's going to be a, a freebie, uh, application uh, in there. Sorry, so that's one application per deadline yeah. for this particular program? It's going to be for every program, actually, but so for if this you're, program. So you can't submit like a tour grant with a songwriting grant? The yes, you can. It's oh. per stream. Per stream. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can, you can s submit to multiple streams if, if, if it's all eligible and, and it makes sense, but you can't put two in for the same stream. Gotcha. Yeah. So Normally, this is a one year, one deadline a year as well. So just yeah. to clarify that. Like yeah. In, so in, yeah. So come March seventeenth, twenty seventeen, it's only going to be one deadline for this. Mm -hmm. And what we're looking for is your artist development plan for the entire year. And um, but again, we're gonna, so we're going to do half one in September just to get people used to it, and it won't count towards your three investments. After you, if you if we invested you three times in this program and you don't meet export ready, that artist is not eligible anymore to this program. Yeah. So this, oh, sorry, sorry, no, no, no. Uh, this September 15th deadline, will yeah. that affect the artist development plan? Will you still be looking for a year-long one? Or a no, we're one for a six-month one. Okay. Yeah. We want it wrapped up. We want this over, this, this program, and a lot of them actually now, are running over our fiscal years, which are April 1st to March 31st. Okay. So we'd like to see this wrapped up on March 31st. So then that way you're eligible for the March uh, 15th deadline. Yeah, so because the projects have to be wrapped uh, within our fiscal year. Um, does that make sense? I've got a couple questions on the phone. Okay, sure. First of all, Sean wants me to tell you to take your phone off there because that microphone's oh, picking up the vibration. <laughs> okay, so um, uh, Forward and Acadian had sent a tweet about, well, they're wondering about the, I think the process of, um, of reviewing these particular ones. Uh, yeah. Are developing artist applications still juried based on music first before looking at the plan? Well, you recall that we can we can bring up the, uh, the in the guidelines we have we, we put out exactly how it's assessed, mm -hmm. and it's right here. So it's even. It's every every thing that is assessed is is even. It's a quarter each of the score. Okay. Just a quick question that you were saying per stream if. So, so I, I might be a bit lost here, but when you were saying per stream, that meant you cannot apply for the showcasing part as well as the touring in the same deadline? If you're an export-ready artist or company, you can, uh, no, you can't, because in, if you see the guidelines, uh, a showcase is eligible in the touring stream as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the showcasing stream would be just for a one-off uh, type of... Uh, or, or if you're doing a couple of showcases over a couple of weekends or something, like in the UK when there's like Liverpool Sound City and Great Escape and Focus Wales run over three weekends, maybe you did that. But if you're doing a tour and there's a showcase in it, yep. that can be part of your um, application or not. Actually, I think you can actually put one in just for that showcase. But if you just want to streamline it and, you can, and if, you've got, you know, the, if you can afford it in your budget for the one app, you can just do it in one app too. Because a showcase, even though there's a showcase stream, a showcase component is eligible in the touring one as well, as far as expenses. I, I think that's an example of thing that, for example, Coca just happened. Yeah. You, you applied for Coca, but your, your university tours on until September, you know what I mean? They're so separate, would you include them? No, 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 no. Those are two separate yeah. things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, in the past, 
past, I mean, one of the ways that we got a whole band to Europe was to apply for a showcase. And then if we were able to build a tour around that, we would also apply for a tour. Yep. So... You have the flexibility to do a... Uh, one, you, you have the flexibility to do a separate showcase application, okay. so or you can, or a showcase is an eligible expense in your tour. Within, yeah. Like sometimes the, the max is still not enough, so we would apply for two grants. So that's still. Okay. Yeah, but you, you, the expenses wouldn't. You, if it's cost, if you're doing it because you can't afford the showcase, then it's not going to work out, <clears throat> because the showcase is going to be. If it's a separate application, yeah. it's it's got a ceiling anyway, yeah. right? So, and then the tour is, is separate in another application. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, So yeah. sometimes those are, there's still different costs, like we split up the costs. Yeah, 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 but they can't, they can't come together yeah. at any point. Well, I don't think yeah. they could before yeah. either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. Um, But if you just wanted to submit one application under touring, yeah. and there happened to be a showcase in it, you can do that too. Those are eligible expenses. Yeah, totally. yeah. It, yeah. I mean, assuming There's no separate sort of, enough, like, yeah. showcase pod, except for, like, there is, there's a separate stream. Right, that has a pot, yeah. but within the tour support stream, yeah. you can apply for showcase expenses in tour support. Yes, right. okay. and marketing too. If if you're not hitting up a marketing application separately, marketing expenses are also eligible right, in right. in tour Let's support. Say, like you're doing a tour and you're already at your max for that tour, and then in addition to that, you've got a showcase on a different weekend. Yeah. you can apply for that showcase yeah. and those costs. And then yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, uh, one other thing, though, we might as well hit this up now, is about the, the application process, so we don't have to keep yeah. visiting that. Mm -hmm. um, where are we here? Sorry. Oh, yeah, okay. So, the profile thing. Um, if you already have a profile, do not create another profile. Um, if you know you have another profile, but you don't know how to get to it, you don't know how to access it, Contact Serge, Email. he will share it with you again, and you can get in there and update it, but by all means, please do not create another profile. It's a tremendous amount of work for us when there's duplicate profiles in our system, uh, because everything that you do is attached to your profile at Music Nova Scotia. So, um, that Feel free to bookmark the link in yes. your browser yeah. but again, after I send it to yeah. you. And if you can't find it, even though you thought you bookmarked it, it's just as simple as yeah. emailing him and just he can email. share it with you right away. So. Um, is that understood? Okay. Okay. Any questions around developing? Uh, would you guys be able to clarify the demo aspect? It has to be in the factory when it has to be an unreleased demo. Oh. Mm -hmm. Is that the same? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But your assessment track can be your delivery track. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Business development stream. Uh, this is open to uh, both categories of companies. So um, whether you're developing or export ready company, you can apply to this stream. Um, it's a 50% investment. Um, speaking of percentage of investment, one important thing though about the developing is that um, it's a 75% investment. Yeah. So that's higher than what it used to be under emerging. We're, we're allowing we're investing more in, in your budget. Um, but it, except for that $500 in kind, it has to be a real money spend. Um, and there are, and you need to look at the, the criteria um, carefully before you spend the money because we're encouraging every way possible in most of our programs, um, especially developing, that you're spending with Nova Scotian vendors. Um, obviously, it's not possible all the time. If you're buying Facebook ads or you're touring in, in Europe, that's impossible. We understand that or if you're marketing in Europe. But when it can be done, <clears throat> we want to have the, the investment spend in the province. And again, it all goes back to our philosophy of trying to grow more music businesses. So we'd like to see that kind of uh, um, attention paid to our, to our local providers in the industry. Okay. Um, business development will also only have one deadline a year come March 2017, but we're gonna have, again, a September deadline. But we're gonna do a full uh, $5,000 uh, cap on that. Um, it, there's a wide range of eligible activity again for business development. Um, it's all in here. Um, and third parties too. 
we're not allowing for a lot of uh, related party costs. So, and again, you can read the business policies, but related parties are like, you know, family, friends, other companies you're a shareholder in, um, in-house stuff. Um, some programs that we have, I think in, in the marketing and our live, live performance streams, there is some a percentage, I think up to 25% can be done in-house, but uh, there are, it's either not allowed or there are there caps on it. So please be aware of all that. And we just don't have the time to go through all those specifics. But again, that's why it's important to read the criteria, read the business policies. Okay. Do you have employees within your company that are taking on certain roles within? Yeah, so that would be, that's a, that's a related party expense. Yeah. yeah. So that is either not allowed or it's capped at 25%, depending on the program. Okay, so there's all kinds of eligible costs um, specific to business development, and it can't be artist specific to one artist. It has to be for your company overall or your roster overall. Um, you know, marketing your company, marketing your entire roster. Uh, actually, in this program, you're allowed a maximum of 50% for in-house and related parity costs to a maximum 50% of total eligible budget. And you need to disclose your in-house and related parity uh, transactions. Web maintenance is eligible, but it's maxed at 500 a month, for example. Um, consulting fees, but they have to be approved by Serge. So if you're gonna hire a consultant for your company, you need to talk to him about it before you put an application in. Um, Ineligible, the usual stuff, overhead, staff salaries, not eligible, day-to-day um, -day office expenses, equipment, supplies, any capital costs. That's always been the way with our programs, okay? Um, now, are any costs that's related to an eligible traveler and a showcase or tour support application? So again, there's no crossover. You can't double dip on expenses across streams. And that was pretty much always like, always the case, yeah. always the case in all of the programs that you'll ever come across. So if you're claiming the expense for an eligible traveler on your tour, but they're in a, a business development uh, application that has the same, that's claiming the same expenses, uh, they'll be disallowed. No parties, booze. No donated services. No donated services are in-kind. So you can't claim any in-kind on business development. And, and no, admin, no admin fees. You can't take admin fees in this program. Uh, with all of our programs, uh, total public investment, which is defined as us, any other government support, including Factor and Star Maker, cannot exceed 75% of your total eligible budget. Okay? Otherwise, we're going to call you back, or Factor's going to call you back, someone's going to call you back, and... Uh, so, but if you, you know, by us having that 75% rule and you abide by it, there should be no clawbacks with anybody that you deal with. Yeah, but if you do 75 with us, you'll never get in that situation with them. So we, we consulted with them on that. Completion reports. Completion reports. Um, we don't have those up yet. Those will be coming next because, you know, the deadline hasn't reached yet. But... Uh, there'll be uh, completion reports that are required, and they're due 30 days after your project end date now. It's shorter, it used to be 60, yeah, I believe. Yes, right. We want them in in 30 now. And again, with even when you're budgeting on the app, online application forms and with the completion forms, we're asking you questions about potential revenue, actual and potential revenue. Uh, in, the, in the budget when you apply, it's potential revenue. And when you do a completion port, report is going to be, you know, actual and um, projections. And we really need you to think about that. Don't get lazy with that because, you know, think up to three years from the project finish date of what you think, you know, could be potential revenue source for your company or you as an artist. Um, one thing in the back end of this, how we've designed this program is to make the collection of this data way more important and uh, way more workable for us so that we can continue to find investment for you. And if you don't think about this and take these reports and budgets seriously, then we're gonna have a hard time justifying our sector and justifying investment. 
and, um, and it's never been more important to have real, actual data to go to our partners and say, this works, you know, this is helping our artists, and we can show you, and we can show you in so many different ways. We want to be able to say, and also to analyze, we'll, we, uh, you know, next year we'll be able to take a whole year's worth of this and say, what did our clients spend the most on touring? And we could, like, that line item, we can just, you know, examine that, and, and we can look at all the different ways people are spending money, earning money, and we can make better decisions and make the programs better, and that's part of it as well. We want to continue to, to grow the program so that, um, you know, they're living and breathing and they're working for you, and they're not just a static thing that's, that, that becomes irrelevant to you and your, and your businesses, okay? So again, there'll be one special deadline in September, um, but it'll be for the full 5,000. And then from that point on, there'll only be one deadline a year. And again, it'll be over the Music Nova Scotia fiscal year, April 1st to March 31st. Questions on business development? Anything online? Don't believe so. No. Okay. Business travel. This is, uh, we, well, I mean, business travel's been an eligible expense before, but it's a separate stream and it's, this is new. And it's part of us trying to have more flexibility with uh, people who need to travel for business. Um, we know that opportunities can come up at the last minute that you need to take advantage of, and we want you to be able to capitalize on that. So the biggest difference, really the only difference between being an export-ready business or company entrepreneur and a developing one is that if you're export-ready, you get ac automatically you have access to the business travel stream. Okay. And this has no deadline, it's a rolling deadline. You can submit your application even 24 hours prior to traveling. Um, it's a 50% investment to a maximum of $5,000 per applicant per Music Nova Scotia fiscal year. So you can ask for any amount, but at $5,000 you're capped out for the year. So you can sort of just budget your travel with us and submit as you need to and uh, try to spread it out so that you're not capping out. And we hope to turn these around quickly, uh, two weeks on this one. So if you're, because we, we only pay out on the end. There's no advance for business travel. So you have to be able to finance it out of your pocket in the first place. But we want to get the money to right away as soon as you're done. There's, so there's no retro, basically, on this go, go back, basically. So um, in this situation, you travel, and you figure you've got to travel the next day, you go do it, it had to be submitted. Before. Yeah, right. you have to put it in. Yeah. Application. It's, it's a really simple application, I think. Yeah. It's fairly simple. Yeah. It does require a plan. We want to know where you're going, why, who you're meeting with, you know, what, what, what's the strategy, what are your goals. Um, but, you know, um, if you did have to make a quick decision to travel the day before, I think it is possible to put the application in. And, uh, and if it's that important and you can't, you know, call Serge. Yeah. And, and if you can verbally, you know, tell him how important and why it's important to go. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we try to be flexible, but you know, don't take advantage of that oh, though, absolutely. because he'll get upset. <laughs> and uh, it's just that, yeah. My yeah. pen's all yeah. out of ink, yeah. I can't write you a check. And, and speaking of times uh, of turning over funding, it's, it's been difficult for us the last couple of years, and if I can just take a second to explain mm -hmm. why. Um, we were sort of in, uh, since um, the last couple of years, we were sort of shifted around to where our budgets were in government, and we were kind of in limbo for a couple of years until they figured things out. And um, so the way we were receiving money from our government partners was a little bit different than it used to be, and it, it increased our, our wait times to get money. So, but moving forward with, with this new investment and these new, this new program, um, we're going to get back to 30-day turnarounds. We want the applications, the deadline, jury, and the check to you in 30 days, and that, that's going to be our new commitment to to speed up the process, to get money out quicker to people, because we know you need it. And uh, we, we appreciate your patience, everybody, the last uh, year and a half or so of, of delayed times. But ultimately, it was truly out of our control, and we were trying to do the best that we could. But the, the, the new uh, agreements that, that we have now is that, you know, it's not going to be a factor. We're going to be able to, to move money uh, more efficiently. So. And again, business travel, uh, it's, it has to support your entire company uh, or business. You can't go on a trip to support just one artist, um, unless your business is just one artist, I suppose. Mm. But if you have a company with more than one client, it has, you have to show us that you're going on travel to, it's really sort of non-artist specific. It's, 
You know, I'm taking a meeting for this client, I'm taking a meeting for another client. And you know what, you can easily do that in Toronto. If you're going to Toronto and you have more than one client, you can pick up a bunch of meetings for your other clients when you're in Toronto. You know what I mean? I mean, you should, you should be able to, right? You know? So if anything, it would be a good excuse to, to pick up a bunch of meetings for all of your roster uh, and your clients while, you know, while you're on the road. So. Again, it's the same to apply. Every stream though has its own application uh, online now. It's the same applicant profile, but on the website, every stream has its own. Before we had one application for everything, but now it's each, each stream and component even has their own, uh, their own online forms. They're all connected to the same yeah. pool of applicant profiles, yeah. so you just choose that when you're when you're putting your application in. There are some again. There's nuances to all the eligible costs in every program, and it's up to you to read and pay attention to these. And pretty much everywhere there is a nuance like that, it is noted on the budget form on the application. Um, like for example, promotional materials, uh, you can't spend more than 400 bucks. So even for business travel, you can you can spend some money on marketing items for that business travel trip, okay? Um, promotional CDs, t-shirts, soft goods, $400 max. Uh, local ground transportation, maximum of 300 per trip. Things like that, you can't, you know, so there's little things you need to know before you start spending money. Um, per diems are allowable, 100, maximum $100 per day, but no more than nine days. We don't recognize a business trip that's longer than nine days. That includes, uh, there's a day of travel, Nine. Seven days and a day of travel. That's the maximum that you can do that. Um, for conferences and events in your home city, it's different. We, we only maximum, there's, there's smaller maximum amounts that you can spend on transportation and things like that. And we define what a home city means, 100 kilometers within the, uh, where you're going for a meeting and where your head office is. Um, ineligible expenses, anything specific to an artist. Um, registration fees, showcase fees things like that for artists. Any, there's no in-house or related party costs allowed for business travel, and why would there be? You know, what, you're going for a business meeting, there's nothing that you can do in-house to really, so I think that's just common sense, unless you, you know, try to pay your employee to book your flight for you or something like that. But <laughs> business cards aren't eligible, hospitality. Uh, rental, you can't use your own vehicle and claim it as a rental, flat fee. Um, there's mileage that you can claim, but you can't claim it as a rental vehicle, any private vehicle. We don't give any monetary value for airline points tickets. So that's, you can't claim any expense if you use uh, air mile points. Event tickets. Uh, repeat trips within a three month period to the same city. Um, unless one of the trips is to attend a conference or if you called Serge and said, I, I know I was there three times, but if I go this time, I know that we're going to sign this deal. That type of thing. But you have to be able to justify it. Okay. No admin fees. Yeah. No admin fees. And the rest of the, 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 you know, the funding, distribution, everything is the same as all the other programs. It's a 50% investment, no more than 75% maximum public investment and uh, you need receipts and everything for completion and you need to do completion within 30 days. Any the receipts have already been, um, if you're saying like I'm going to Nashville next week, can I apply for this program and then uh, even though I've already booked my flight? No. So all the receipts have to occur after I have yeah. applied. Yeah. Um, you could apply and not claim that flight though. You could uh, hotel, per diems, ground transportation, just that your flight wouldn't be eligible, okay? So. Good question about um, the hometown costs part of it. Now, what, what would, uh, how would hometown fit in with business travel? And, like, in my head, that just means like, like trips to like Toronto, like trips to Montreal, or wherever you're going for yeah. business. Hometown, would that be like, say someone's in town for conference or something like that? Like, um, I'm not quite sure. You'd have to put a plan, you know, we have to look at that. We want it to be, that's, we left that in there um, from factors stuff because we want it to be flexible. Like if you have a, if you need to get to Sydney for some reason, I don't know, it's, it's, it's possible that you need it to go somewhere else in the province to do a business meeting that was important for your company because it's not just ban, it's not, there's different facets of the, of the sector that you could be involved in in business that could, that you know, you would need to go someplace else in the province for, uh, for business purposes. So we just want to have flexibility there. 
Okay, so the live performance stream has uh, three components. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, there's Tor support, showcasing, and community presenter. Uh, Tor support is a 50% uh, investment to a maximum of $10,000. Uh, showcase, 75% maximum to $5,000. So it's a smaller investment for showcasing, but it's, but it's a higher amount of investment on your eligible expenses. Um, again, one application per deadline per, per component here. Um, and then community presenters, which is the form of bringing it home. Uh, we do a we'll do a 25% investment for Nova Scotian resident artist fees uh, to a maximum of $3,000 per year. So they cap out at $3,000 per year. Um, a thousand per deadline. Too. And a thousand per deadline, yeah. Is, is the max investment. Yeah. You don't have to ask for a thousand, but that's the max you can ask for. Uh, these deadlines are going to be much like um, what EDP was. So there'll be four deadlines, your March, June, this year, July, um, September, December, for showcase and tour support. We have rolling deadlines for community presenters, but we need their applications in 30 days prior to the presentation that they're applying for. Um, and you need your applicant profile updated a week before. And uh, costs, again, costs incurred prior to submitting application are not considered eligible. Um, there are certain, you know, when we talk about the the, the flight thing, it, um, you know, once this thing is up and, and running and this crazy seat sale comes on and you know you're doing it, you're already committed, and you can prove to us that you're committed uh, to doing uh, the travel, then we can consider that um, maybe an eligible expense. Because we do get that a lot. In the last couple of years, we've been like, you know what, there's a seat sale on right now. And, you know, it's, it's four months out from the deadline. I know I'm going. I have a contract. Can this be an eligible expense? And our hands were tied with that. For, and we don't want to have that. We don't want to write, at the same time, we don't want to write it in. But just so you know, we want to have some common sense um, flexibility around that. But you'll still, you still have to, we couldn't just take your word for it that you're going there, though, to make that an eligible expense. You'd have to show Serge that, um, there is some, a mechanism in place that proves that you're actually doing that activity. Uh, so, um, again, we, we want to have some sort of, yeah. Sorry, okay. So say, because this definitely happened to us, but say you know you're playing a showcase um, and the people involved are just really slow about getting you the details, yeah. and so you end up having to wait and wait because you can't get your grant in because you don't have the details and so you can't buy your flights. So say we had at least an email confirmation or someone you could speak to or something saying they're performing at Reaper they've been accepted. As long as you can prove it. And then we can, we can sort of buy our flights, yeah. submit the grant when we have more details. I mean, I would yeah, check with I, you anyway. I yes, don't, don't ever do it. Don't ever do it and not check in first. So, but presuming we sort of email you. And yeah. mm -hmm. I hate to open up this can of worms, but I do want people to know that we're that we want to, we want this to make sense. And it, you know, I'll tell you one thing right now: it doesn't make sp sense for you to spend more money than you should. Well, that's what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, I know. I know. Yeah. So that's why we, we know that. So that's why we want to. Um, but at the same time, we don't want people just going nuts with expenses and not telling us, and then crying about it on the back end of it after we deny them, right? So, okay. And this, these, the showcase and tour support are for uh, export ready artists only. Uh, companies can apply for artists on, on their behalf, but the applicant has to be the artist, okay? And then component C community presenters, and that's self-explanatory. Again, there is uh, various nuances. Uh, the most important thing around showcase and tour support are the things around um, being current, okay? So for showcasing, uh, we will have a list of showcases, if they're not already up there. But if it's not on our list, just talk to us. There are stipulations around eligible travelers and uh, who they are. 
So you have to be aware of that. Eligible crew, eligible travelers, hired musicians, things like that. Um, hired musicians must be residents of Nova Scotia unless you can prove otherwise to us that it's impossible to do that. And it just doesn't make sense for your plan. But again, we're trying to encourage business within our own province with our own investment, okay? Um, eligible crew is, has a, a definition and there are uh, caps on this, on how much uh, you can pay them and things like that. Um, you need to have a deal memo with them that's uploaded to your, to your application. Uh, for showcasing, there is a maximum of five days for domestic and seven for international. Per diems are $50 a day per calendar year. Privately owned vehicles, 50 cents a kilometer, all these little things that are in here. Um, promotional items, uh, maximum of 500 units that we'll recognize. $400 we'll recognize for marketing expenses for showcasing. Uh, higher musician fees are capped at $300 performance or day. If you're playing three shows in a day at a showcase, it's capped at 300 still. Okay. We will recognize donated in kind, um, but they're capped at 25% of your total eligible budget. In-house in is allowed at 25%. And anyway, and, but performance fees don't count towards in-house cap. It's, it's other things. That, that wouldn't make sense. Yes, the performers are probably in-house, in but that doesn't count towards the cap. The other services. We recognize third-party expenses like your booking agent fees, commissions, managers' commissions, up to 20%, no more. Local ground transport, 100 a day. Ineligible vehicle repairs, all the usual. Um, application expenses, award show ticket purchases, buy on fees if you have to pay to be on a showcase. We don't recognize that. Uh, or if anyone's claiming business travel under that stream, it can't, again, it can't cross into this. Booking and management fees where your applicant is self booking or self managing. Right. So if you're your own agent or your own manager, you can't. You can't claim 20% for yourself. Admin fees are allowed, either 15% of your total budget or five, a maximum of $500. Um, you have to, well, one thing we missed here that we need to go back to is um, Yes, so there's some, there's some components here. So you have to have at least, for, t for tour, and we'll get to that, yet there has to be six public performances. Four dates have to be uh, uh, paid. Um, they have to be 30 minute sets, at least 75% of them. So there is definitions of what a show is, what a tour is, what a showcase is that you have to, uh, that you're responsible for understanding. Um, and also, too, for, for components A and B, which is, again, showcase and tour support, you have to have a current release. And under these streams, a current release, it, it, your, your release can't be any more than 24 months old. So you can't apply to these programs if you haven't had a record out commercially available within 24 months of the deadline. Okay? And again, it doesn't make sense to be able or to Or something in. coming up within six months. Yeah, if or, something, new, if it's new or something coming in six months. So that goes for both of those streams, okay? And we'll get to it, but in marketing, it has to be 12 months. We won't, fi we won't find anything that's older than 12 months. You guys getting bored yet? <laughs> Any questions online lately? Uh, no, we haven't had any. No, okay. Tour support, uh, a 50% investment, $10,000 max. Eligible tours, that's all defined in here. Again, you have to have six confirmed dates, four of which are paid. Uh, we allow a couple for like promotional, if you're doing a promo show or whatever, you know. You not, get, not, <clears throat> not actually doing just interviews like for the paper, but actually performing. So if you're doing right. like, a t like a TV show, right. a breakfast television kind yeah. of show, or yeah. a radio show yeah. like XM yeah. or something like yeah. that, then yeah. that's a performance that yeah. can, can count. Yeah. 
So you have to provide a tour plan and a showcase plan for these streams. In your showcase plan, we want to see a thorough uh, proposal that covers where, why, when, who, especially who, and why are you meeting with them, you know. It makes a big difference to the jury. So, yeah. um, so even if you're, you know, you've clicked off all the boxes in terms of being eligible, that's one of the biggest things that I've seen as far as juries evaluating a showcase opportunity yeah. is just how, how much do you already know and have you reached out to these people? Are they confirmed to come and meet with you yeah. and see the showcase? Yeah. That stuff is important. We, yeah, you really need to show confirmed meetings, like truly confirmed meetings. Um, and you need to tell us who they are. And we will spot check. We will say, Does, is this artist booked a meeting with you for when they're traveling to this showcase? Um, so that's really important to showcase plan and your tour plan. Um, you know, we want to see your goals for the tour, your expected results, a description of the tour, your commercial history, notable successes. Anyone that's been applying regularly to EDP, you know what you need to do to make a good application, okay? But we just can't stress enough how competitive this is going to be because we want to give more money to better projects, okay? We want to give you the maximum amount, okay? It says $10,000. We don't want to give you five. We actually want to give you 10. So show us that it's worth it, okay? Any questions around touring and, uh, and showcase? There are the, the eligible expenses and ineligible expenses are pretty much identical. Um, although there's a higher admin fee allowed for showcasing because the budget's higher. So instead of 500, 15% uh, or 500, in showcasing, it's 15% or 1,000 in tour support. So no, nothing in this, this program here is retro either. Like if you find out you're playing a showcase a month before and the deadline doesn't fall in that period, then just yeah, it, it, as long as you put the application in. Yeah. You can put your application in any time. Yeah, and as soon as the application hits our system, that's when your expenses become eligible. Okay. Now yeah. what about in the case of this period that just happened where there was no way to apply? We are, uh, in our communications, we have uh, let everyone know that we are recognizing eligible expenses from April 1st on till today for this deadline only because, because of the delay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a good question because, yes, we are recognizing April 1st. Anything prior to April 1st, though, will not be considered yeah. an eligible expense. Okay. What, if the, what if the project has happened already? As long as the expenses are April 1st and not before. Yeah. Because a lot of projects probably happened already because well, of the yeah. delay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Daryl, I hope you were listening for that. <laughs> uh, proof of performance will be required in your completion reports, but you know, we, can, we can actually cover completion reports in other sessions once we get them up and running. But again, they're not available online yet because you don't need them yet. Uh, but people will need them soon. Um, probably right after the deadline, so mm -hmm. people at projects that are retroactive to April 1st. And the community presenters is pretty straightforward. Um, the presenters have to have a minimum ticket price just like they did in bringing it home. Um, they have to provide an artist guarantee just like they did in bringing it home. But we will recognize guarantees versus splits for the community presenters in the new program. Um, again, the investment limit is 1000 per application. Uh, and a three thousand dollar annual cap, and the eligible activity is just pretty much the activity that you, that they've done before as a bringing it home presenter, with the exception that it can be any point of the year. Before there were seasons for bringing it home, but now it can be any time of the year. And um, originally we put out in these guidelines that the the community presenters stream or component of the of the live performance stream would be. Um, Jury, but we're actually going to, we're not going to jury these. They're going to be done in-house to save time and turn around the program quicker. So it'll be, it'll be like the business travel stream. Business travel is not jury either. So it'll be staff-based decision-making on uh, business travel and community presenters. Community, community presenters need to show us a plan, though. They need to present us with a marketing plan for the show. Um, Last call for questions on the live performance stream. Don't see any out there. Oh, wait. Yeah. No, that's old. Okay. <laughs> We're good. Do we bore them to tears? I think so. Yeah.
trying to make it exciting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, marketing. This supports export ready artists and record labels uh, by contributing to the cost of marketing promotion for a qualifying album. We provide an investment of 50% of the total eligible budget and a $10,000 max per applicant for deadline. Deadlines again are March, June, except for July this year, September, December 15th. Just a reminder to everybody that deadlines can fall on weekends, okay? It's not the Monday following. And uh, applications must be in before 12 a.m. So they need to be in at 11.59. And we can tell what time they're submitted in our system, so. <laughs> so who can apply? So the key to this for the marketing uh, component or stream is that um, Basically, you have to own the exploitation rights of the recording. That's who applies. So um, if you're an artist and you have a record label and they own the exploitation rights, they have to apply. If you're an artist and you own it, then the artist applies. So is that, is that clear to everybody? Okay. But whoever it is, they have to be export ready. Okay. If you're unsigned and is not licensed to sound recording to another party, um, then the applicant is the artist. If you're signed by a label or, or licensed by a label, um, then your, your label applies for you. Okay? So again, that's why uh, foreign-owned independent record labels are eligible. Major record labels are not eligible for anything in our programs. <laughs> uh, if the applicant is an artist, <laughs> artist managers can fill this out for you, but the applicant is the artist not the manager. You need to know what a qualifying release is for all of these things. It's a commercially released uh, recording. For this stream, it can't be any older than 12 months old or coming up later than six months for release. Um, it has to beat MAPL standards, which we have in our business policies, all those standard things. It has to have, I think, six tracks or 20 yeah, minutes of 20 music. Minutes of music. Um, so make sure you know what a qualifying release is, okay? You apply the same way, you have to have an updated applicant profile. Please make sure your applicant profiles are updated. So here's the qualifying again. So it's in our business policies, but qualifying album is uh, reiterated here in the criteria. Be performed by Nova Scotian, meet our Maple criteria for Canadian content that's defined in the business policies. Be a full length album or at least six tracks or include at least 20 minutes of recorded material be comprised of all new previously unreleased sound recording masters. Eligible activities are a wide range of marketing activities that you would expect, okay? Advertising publicity campaigns and print TV, radio, digital, social media, lyric videos. Uh, and there's no limit to lyric videos. You can make one for every song on the record, be eligible. Market research, subscriptions to SoundScan. And I think that the, we really wanna see our clients using eligible expenses like this. Again, it goes back to having more data for our sector, uh, knowing more about you know, where, we, where we fit, you know, um, what kind of business we're doing out there in the world. So if you don't have a subscription to SoundScan, put it in your application, please. It's an eligible expense. Get it. Why not? You know, report your sales to SoundScan. You, know, you should be doing that anyway. But now we'll, we'll help pay for it. We'll pay for 50% of it. You know? um, any type of subscription services like that, that can help report your sales, track your sales, your streams, all that stuff. We want you owning and subscribing to the, those types of technologies so that we can you know, improve your business. Knowing that information is gonna help you help your business. Um, production costs to an album release party eligible, but not hospitality. Website development, radio promo, ads, tracking, Music video production. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other eligible cost notes in here that you need to be aware of. There are some caps um, on certain items, and they're usually they're, a lot of them are the same throughout. You can't, for example, you can't spend more than a thousand bucks on web maintenance. And your sound scan can be eligible in this stream as long as it's specific to the artist that's applying. Title reports, venue settlements, things like that. Lyric, vid lyric videos, again, no limit. Promotional videos are eligible. 
Admin fees are allowed, 15% or max of 1,000. Donated in-kind services are allowed, 25%. Ineligible costs, the usual wages, services, supplies, company overhead. Uh, anything claimed previously within another project, which is the same as usual. Contesting prizes, you can't claim uh, any expenses around contesting your, your uh, record that you're marketing. Um, and anything around applications for prize or award nominations for the record. You get a 50% advance on agreement, 50% on completion. Again, 75% maximum public funding uh, and a 50% investment. Any questions around marketing? All quiet on the interwebs. Okay. Um, was publicist fees included in that as well? Yeah. Okay. So, what was the cap rate in house on that one? The cap on marketing? Yeah. 10000 an applicant per deadline. But the, the in house expenses? Where's the in house in here? Twenty-five. Yeah. I'm just trying to understand, like, so if somebody comes into my office and edits a video or does graphic design, and I give them a T4, this falls under the twenty-five percent. But if they're an independent contractor, I'm paying them such that it's mm -hmm. their third party. Yeah. So that's the only difference. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, technically, I guess that would be it. Yeah, I mean, these things are set up, um, you understand, so that companies aren't taking the entire investment and spending it in-house, right? Because um, that can lead to, to not great projects sometimes. Okay, any other questions? I don't think there's anything online. We're good. Oh, wait, now we get one. Really? Sorry, that was a response. It's okay. So are any videos fine? You notice, I noticed you mentioned generic videos and promotional videos. Like Music video production. Music, so yeah, just like any kind of video is covered under that. Okay, move on to mentorships. So the mentorship program is pretty much the same as it, as it uh, has been all along. Um, Music Nova Scotia started administering this directly last year when Emerging came under our roof. And uh, we're going to continue with the mentorship stream. Uh, biggest thing to note here is that um, the mentee, the applicant, should be the primary benefit of the relationship. Okay? Uh, it's a 75% investment. Uh, to a max of $15,000 per applicant per deadline. There are two deadlines annually, March and September, same as before. Uh, this is open to developing and export ready. Company, artists, just about anyone can, can apply to this. A mentor may be from outside the province of Nova Scotia if improved in advance by Music Nova Scotia. Uh, and another thing too is that you could not, if you submit an application to the mentorship program and you don't do a consultation with Serge, it will not be accepted. I mean, we strongly encourage it. You should be doing it for every program. You should be talking to Serge before you apply and throughout the process. <clears throat> but we won't throw them out in those other streams. But in this one, we will, if you don't consult. It's not an eligible application. Fair warning. Eligible acti activities around a business and entrepreneurial development and acquisition of technical skills. Um, eligible activities is needs to, that's why you need to consult because it's going to be uh, flushed out case by case, project by project with the program manager as, as we build and develop this stream. Um, again, it's mandatory that you can consult to discuss uh, what is a, an eligible project. 
Um, what's not eligible is going for guitar lessons over time or singing lessons, things like that. Artistic sort of ventures are not, um, but technical things are. So, um, you know, uh, recording engineers, things like that uh, could, could be considered <coughs> eligible. But again, you have to talk to Serge about it. Um, but we, we definitely don't, um, won't invest in a mentorship that is, you know, getting better at your guitar or your bass or your drums type of thing. That's, this is about um, entrepreneurial development, business development, building a business and um, finding a job working in the business side of things. Uh, we need more managers. We need more type of people like that coming out of Nova Scotia. We're short on those types of uh, uh, roles in the province and this is kind of geared around that. Yeah, the infrastructure still needs to develop. Yeah, we need more infrastructure in the province for support teams so that we can have more in province infrastructure for our artists. Uh, eligible costs are fairly flexible, um, but there are nuances that you need to be aware of again. Um, travel, accommodation, hourly the wages are eligible. Um, you're allowed to claim up to $15 an hour, 40 hours a week for living ages. We actually upped that a dollar an hour from last year, it was only 14. Uh, the applicant, the mentee, is allowed to claim a 15% of min fee payable to the mentor. Uh, to a maximum of 22.50, though, um, and about that, that's fine. We'll recognize that, but we'll tell you right now that strong projects for this, strong applications, are going to involve a situation where the mentor actually uh, has some skin in the game. So if if a, if you can get a project together where they'll add another five dollars an hour to the 15 that we're going to invest in, the up to 75 percent of the, if the 15 dollars that we'll invest in. That's going to make for a stronger application for the jury, and we already know that. Yeah, we've so, seen that. Yeah, we've seen it. through, and those and, are the yeah, ones they that get funded the funded. maximum amounts uh, more often, from from what we see. So it just helps. It, and again, there's there's a business transaction there. Um, it's not it's not necessary. It's not mandatory, but it will make for stronger mentorship uh, projects. So if they can just throw, you know, if you can get them to up your, your hourly weight or some sort of benefit that they can provide to you that is some sort of compensation, um, we feel that that's a stronger application. Again, we, and that's note 23 there. Donated in kind will be recognized, but are capped at 25. And there's no admin fees for the mentees. They can only claim the, men, the admin fee for the mentor. Uh, ineligible, the usual capital cost, overhead, business supplies. Uh, again, 75 cap on public investment. Um, and with this program, though, we'll advance you 75% up front and you, you get the 25 on completion because a lot of this is living expenses and things like that. So, any questions? Mentorship program more geared or oriented around the infrastructure building of managers and agents. Yeah, versus, the business development. Right, because like songwriters can apply there, but it just seems like it's a bit more difficult to qualify. Songwriters can't apply to this. Oh no. no. Okay. Sorry, I'm just no. 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 Songwriters can apply to arts development though. And, right. You know, get up to four thousand dollars for songwriting business development mm -hmm. under the artist development stream. Right. Yeah. And if they own a company with a roster of songwriters, then they can apply under business development. So we feel that even though some, there might be some restrictions in certain streams, when you look at the big picture, you, generally you can find a way through it. You can map through it and find a situation that can apply uh, to your business or your company. You know what I mean? So we, we're, we're trying to, you know, that was part of this, the, the way that these are designed is to try to find a way to, you know, you might not be able to do a certain project under one stream, but hopefully you can find a way to make it work in another. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So there's so options. Artists at all? If they're going to be, they, they could happen to be artists, okay. but it's, it's for uh, business development, primarily infrastructure development. Um, we, again, we allow out of province mentors, but we're encouraging in province because we want uh, some of our growing, developing, and export ready growing companies. Mm -hmm to be able to access uh, human resources as well and get trained while they're, while they're doing it. So 
Um, technical skills would be eligible. Yeah, technical but skills. But if it's just, you know. Yeah, but not American. songwriting, not guitar playing, not singing lessons, um, you know, not learning um, piano somewhere for six months with someone. I mean, there, there's definitely, there probably had been applications where there, you know, there are legitimate applications where somebody is of a high caliber and they're going to study with a world master training, you know, that's still... We understand how uh, that could, is, is important to that person, but that's not the goal of this that's project. That's not the goal of this program, yeah. This is an internship yeah. sort of relationship. Yeah. Well, it, it, it could be. And, yeah. 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 They, they need to be learning skills that, yeah. that they can apply on their own. The, 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 the long-term goal here is that they get out from underneath this. And they either work with, continue to work with, uh, with the company that they've chosen to work with or the mentor, or they have the skills to you know, go out on their own. Yeah, and, and, and develop right away. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and hopefully build some stronger businesses around uh, artist team support, managers, more labels, uh, agents. Yeah, agents. Um, you know, we're really interested in publishing now. We want more. We want more publishing happening with our clients. Uh, so we'd like to see more businesses with that as a focus. So, so those are the streams and their components. The deadline is July 15th. Remember, it's about investment. Um, we don't use the F word anymore, the funding word. And it's about le yeah, le leveraging the investment. Okay. Um, more money for better projects is also part of our philosophy with this. We want to give the maximum amounts to the best projects that come through here. Um, it's highly competitive. Serge is here to work with you, to help you put in the best application possible. Um, I however, wouldn't say that, you wouldn't say that too though, though um, I mean, we wanna give the maximum amount, but at the same time, I don't, don't pad budget just to get to that number. Right. Like, uh, you know, the juries do appreciate it when you're frugal and um, you know, you do the, 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 the project, but don't, ma don't make the project suffer. Like we want to see a good, th well thought out, thorough budget for the, pro for the project. And we want to make sure that, you know, you, you, that, that it has every chance of success. You still have to spend 50%. So like, even yeah. if you get 10 grand, yeah. <laughs> you're 10 grand, yeah. so it kind of makes sense to not. Sure. Yeah. yeah. But, but, you know, we want to see projects come in, though, that, that we know that, that, you know, they know they can get the other investment or they already have it, you know, whether it's factor or whatever, um, your own savings. And, um, you know, I, I know it's, that's a good point, but we still want to see, we want to, you know, give every, if, if your project's that big and you're asking for it, it's really good, then we want to, we don't want to prorate it, I guess is the point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We've got a question from online from Elise. She asks, would publishing in French qualify as it is a special niche? Well, I think as long as the... Of course, the, it doesn't matter. It yeah. doesn't matter. The, uh, as long as the yeah. owner of the, uh, the property is, is Nova the Scotian, applicant. Yeah, yeah. the applicant, then yeah. that's great. And, you know, we're happy to see uh, diversification in that. Yeah, in that no, there's, no, there's no restrictions on language or anything like that. Um, as long as you have a good business plan and a good application and uh, it's eligible, then... Any other questions? We'll go ahead. You never yeah. know. It might apply to someone else. Yeah, you never know. Well, I'm just, before the programs changed, I had talked with both Nikki and Sarah about um, going to do some songwriting with like really established songwriters in the UK for the purpose of writing for other people, but also. It was sort of flexible at the time that I might do writing for myself as well, but it was the idea was to go there for a concentrated amount of time and write with these really established people, which at the time I would have been eligible to apply for something, and now I'm just not sure where because I'm I'm export I'm not export ready, so I don't fall within that developing stream. Well, you so, would if it was a songwriting specific project, and we've already we've already consulted with people on that that are in the same situation as you actually. So if you can put a project plan together that proves that you're going to write for other people right. and that's the sole business purpose of it and you're not releasing that stuff yourself, 
Um, and you can. You but can, I am limited to that. Like you are. Went, you would like be limited to that. The idea was to go and just see what happens. Like, yeah. do some for other people and do yeah. some for me. No, you have to commit to it as um, yeah. as a professional songwriter as we so, find it. Okay. Yeah. I don't think there's any more questions coming in from online. There you go. Quiet bunch tonight. <laughs> we bored them well. Yeah. Well, I hope it was helpful. And again, if you ever have questions at any time, I mean, that's, yeah. that's what Serge is here for. And um, good luck with your applications. And. Uh, I can't wait to read them. Can't wait to give you money. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll give you money. Thanks for coming out, everybody. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah.